And welcome ladies and gentlemen to part 34 of the Pokemon Gold walkthrough. We're going to be tackling Mount Motar. In order to take on this mountain, cave, whatever, you're going to need, you're basically going to be needing Flash because it's extremely dark. You're going to need Surf, obviously to surf across the water. Waterfall to climb up um, one set of, uh, a set of a waterfall. Stupidly worded. And you're also going to be needing strength. So that's why, you know, I got to have selected the type of Pokemon that I have in order to take on this cave. Uh, the cave features four areas, an entrance, an upper or lower part of the cave, and the basement where we are in is the entrance right now. Now, um, every single, every single, um, all four areas of the cave have different stats as far as just normal walking, however... Everything involving water, surfing, fishing, you name it, have exactly the same type of stats. So in order to go through this, I'm just going to read off, you know, the individual, um, the, the stats for every type of water Pokemon that'll go for the whole entire, all four areas. And then I'm going to go through the four different stats you should get just by walking around. Excuse me. So, if you ever decide to go surfing on the water in the gold and silver version, you can pick up yourself a gold dean at a 90% chance, crystal version 60% chance, and you'll have a 10% chance of getting yourself a sea king in all three versions, and in the crystal version only a 30% chance of getting yourself a Merrill. As far as fishing goes, fishing with an old rod, 15% chance of getting a gold dean, 85% chance it's a Magikarp. Good Rod, 65% chance Gold Dean, 35% chance Magikarp, and the Super Rod, 70% chance Gold Dean, 10% chance Sea King, and a 20% chance for Magikarp. Now before going into the other stats of the cave, um, a couple things to note about um, this mountain, this cave, however you want to, whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter. Um, a, a number of items that you can get, some hidden items around. It's kind of, it's a big cave. It's not too hard to get. You know, it. Uh, chances are that you know, obviously, first time going around, you're going to get lost a little bit. But it's not exactly maze-like until we get to the second half of the until we get to the um, upper cave. And even then, um, it's not a, it's not like a, such a complex maze that you're probably going to be stuck on it for hours. It shouldn't take you too long to um, go through this. Another thing to note is that in the gold and silver version, there are no trainers to fight except for the one trainer you find at the very end of it. And But if you play in the crystal version or hard gold or silver, you'll, there are three trainers about that you can face before going against the main person. The main reason why we're here, you know, the trainer that holds a special rare Pokemon, and this is the only place that you're able to get it, from and that's the whole entire reason why we're doing this and because again this is 100% so I, I'm doing it just you know for the sake of doing it. So going through all the other stats in this whole entire cave in the entrance gold silver version Rattata 14% crystal version 30% still in the crystal version only 5% for Eradicate. Uh, Zubat gold silver version 60% crystal version 30% and gold bat 10% these are all across the board by the way. Uh, gold silver version, Machop, 20%, crystal version, 20% in the afternoon only, no chance in morning or the evening. In all three versions, Geodude, 5% chance, gold and silver versions, Merrill, 1% chance all across the board, and crystal version, 20% chance at night. You find yourself in the lower cave, you have a 10% chance of getting a Rattata, gold silver version, 30% chance, crystal version, and Raticate, crystal version only, 10% chance in the afternoon, 20% chance in the evening, and no chance in the morning. Gold, silver version, 5% chance you'll get yourself a Zubat, crystal version, 5% chance in the afternoon, 10% chance in the evening, no chance during the day. Gold, bat, crystal version only, 5% chance all across the board. Machop, gold, silver version, 35% chance all across the board, crystal version, 20% in the afternoon only. Geodude, gold and silver version, 50% chance all across the board. Crystal, uh, crystal version, 30% chance all across the board, and crystal version only, Meryl, 5% chance only at night. Find yourself along the way of the upper cave. Raticate, gold silver version, 10% chance all across the board, crystal version, 10% chance in the afternoon, 20% chance at night, no chance in the morning. 
Gold bad, gold silver version, 5% chance all across the board. Crystal version with a 5% chance in the afternoon, 15% chance at night. Gold silver version for a Machop, 5% chance all across the board, 5% chance in the afternoon only in the crystal version. Machoke, gold silver version, 30% chance all across the board, 30% chance in the afternoon only in the crystal version. Geodude, gold and silver versions, 20% chance all across the board, 20% chance in the afternoon, and 30% chance at night in the crystal version. Graveler, gold, silver, and crystal version, 30% chance all across the board, with the 5% chance at nighttime, you'll get yourself a Meryl in the crystal version only. And finally, we have the basement. Rattata, gold, silver version, 20% chance across the board, gold, silver version, uh... Uh, Raticate, 5% chance all across the board. Crystal version, 5% chance all across the board as well. I don't, okay, I see why they didn't put it together different levels so you can catch it. Uh, Zubat, gold, silver, crystal version, 60% all across the board. And a gold bat, crystal version only, 20% chance all across the board. Machop, gold, silver version, 10% chance all across the board. 10% chance in the afternoon only in the crystal version. Gold, silver, and crystal version for a Geodude, 5% chance all across the board. And finally, Crystal version only, 10% chance at night only that you get yourself a Meryl. Rest of this video obviously is just going to be going through it. It doesn't really take that long to go through the whole entire cave. I think uh, this whole part lasts about a good 11 minutes. Um, had to record it in two sessions because I could not remember off the top of my head where all the items were all at once. You know, and that's one of the hardest things to do is memorizing where everything is for when you have to turn on the recording session. Because as I've stated many times before, my laptop isn't exactly the fastest computer that you are ever going to find. And because of that, if I try and record while having all the information up on my computer as well, it tends to run extremely slow, making the video a very hard process. It'd be running over, well, at about 50% speed the whole entire way and that is very hard to deal with so instead I pretty much have to sit around and memorize where every single item is including the hidden items and every single part that I go through and then just try and do it in one session as best I can you know and for an area like this you know that with how big it is yes it did and you know, I did have to do it in two separate recording sessions because there are four areas that have so many items in it. In fact, going through, you know, we're looking at about a good total of about 15 items to get throughout this whole entire cave. You know, so uh, there was no way not to do it uh, with two separate parts and combining it to make it look like one. It's not the first time I've done it. Certainly, isn't going to be the last. Um. Now, as far as where we are in the poke, you know, in, in Pokemon Gold. You know, we, we, we finished taking on the 8th Gym Leader, and we're doing just a little bit of side exploring. You know, we went out of our way to battle Ho-Oh, defeated it, couldn't capture it. You know, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. And, you know, going through just a couple areas to get myself fully caught up, obviously, with Mount Mortar. I still don't know how you pronounce it. It's really supposed to be Mount Mortar. It's supposed to be Mount Motor. Whatever the hell you're supposed to pronounce it, you know, obviously, this deal right here. We got the... Um, Darkened Cave or the Blackened Cave. I can't remember exactly. I think it's the Dark Cave. I think it's all it is. Just the Dark Cave that we go through. Um, for whatever reason, not exactly as long as I remember it being. I remember being it a lot longer, but it only took me about a good three minutes to go through. After that, um, going through, taking on routes 45 and 46, and then finally we will be making our way to the Pokemon League to take on the Elite Four finally, which will basically have us at halfway through the game with the other half obviously going to Kanto and taking on all the new well some new and all you know the the old gym leaders that we had to go against the last game <clears throat> our one and only battle in this whole entire part as we take our black belt go against his Hitmon Lee and his Hitmon Chan defeat them and then we get the rare Pokemon that we can only get from him that goes by the name of Tyro. Tyrogue is a very special kind of Pokemon. It is a fighting type Pokemon, and it can evolve into one of three types of Pokemon, depending on what its stats are. Now, this is going off of... Actually, I'm not even going to go off of memory. I'm going to look it up so that I can get it right the first time and not look like a complete ass like I usually do on this whole entire channel. And I pretty much guessed it right anyways. 
Tyrogo will evolve at level 20. What he evolves into depends on what his stats are and far as attack and defense goes. If his attack is higher than the defense, he will transform into Hitmonlee. If his defense is higher than his attack, he will turn into Hitmonchan. And if you get the two stats to be exactly the same, then he will transform into Hitmontop, a Pokemon we have yet to run into, but we will be running into within the Elite Four. Uh, just a little you know, piece of trivia for those of you out there that don't know about it. I'm pretty sure a lot of people do. Uh, Hitmonlee, Hitmonchan are basically... Um, play-ons with the two karate, um, the famous karate known stars, Hitmonlee, um, being, wow, I cannot believe I just messed that up. Hitmonlee, I almost said Jet Li, but Hitmonlee's based off of Bruce Lee, and Hitmonchan is based off of Jackie Chan. I'm pretty sure Hitmonlee can be based on Jet Li as well, because Jet Li's a pretty good, but at, at, at the time, you know, Bruce Lee was the main guy, he still pretty much is. Him on top, on the other hand, obviously, it's just the fact that he looks like a spinning top, but that'll be for when we get there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys next time when we take on the Dark Cave.